Welcome to the Indiana Association of College Admission Counseling Virtual College Fair. We're so excited to have you participating in this event. We have some fantastic schools here with us today. My name is Matt and I'll be your facilitator. Before we get started, a few housekeeping items. Your camera and microphone are off so the panelists cannot see or hear you. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. This is just one of many different sessions, so please should check the schedule on the website for more. The presentation is being recorded and will be available at strivescan.com slash Indiana. And now I'd like to turn it over to our first presenter, University of Kentucky. All right, hello everyone. My name is Lindsay Shokes. I'm admissions counselor at the University of Kentucky, and I am lucky enough to be the admission counselor who works with all of our students from the state of Indiana. So no matter where you're joining us from tonight, I get to be um, I get to work with you throughout your college search process. I'm excited to spend the next less than six minutes talking through um, some of what we are so proud of at the University of Kentucky. So to get us started, when thinking about UK, we are a large public research institution located in Lexington. Kentucky. Currently, we have a little over 31,000 um, total Wildcats on campus. Some of those are college students, but others are in graduate or professional programs. When we think about the University of Kentucky, we think about a place where everything is achievable. And I hope that this, um, this next slide, if I can get it to go, will we'll show you a little bit about um, what we mean by that. So with an institution with over 200 majors, there's so much for you to choose from, so many different academic programs. But at the same time, a 16 to one student to faculty ratio or that 85% of classes having less than 50 students. And that's important because we are a big institution with big opportunities, but we wanna make sure that you aren't just a, a face in the crowd or a number on a piece of paper. We also wanna support our students both academically and socially. So having this variety of um, learning centers and tutoring on campus is one of the ways that we do that. Socially, one of the best ways to, to really get connected on campus is by getting involved. Um, I would love to spend our whole six minutes talking about getting involved, but I probably shouldn't do that. And um, so just want to share that there are so many ways for you to find your home, find your community within, um, within our greater University of Kentucky community. So whether you're interested in um, sports or animals or religion or music or whatever the case may be, there's going to be a home for you within, within our community. I'm not really supposed to have faith. Favorites, but if I could, my favorite is uh, Four Paws for Ability, which is raising a future service dog. So basically, it just means that there's cute little puppies running around campus the majority of time. So that's really fun to see. Another good way to really build that community and get connected on campus is by living on campus. Um, so all of our students um, are able to live on campus starting their freshman year if you want to. And one really nice thing about living on campus is all of our residence halls are apartment or suite style. So you're gonna be um, really just sharing a space in a bathroom with a couple other people, which is nice. And they're all pretty new and updated as well. We also offer a variety of what we call living learning programs. We are gonna live and you're gonna learn with students who have similar interests as you, come from similar backgrounds or have similar goals in mind. So again, this is a really cool way for you to take the larger University of Kentucky and, and find that community, find that home, um, and find other students who have those similar interests as you. So it really, really um, creates that community before you even step foot on campus. But speaking of <laughs> finding other people, um, we love our Hoosiers down here in Lexington. Um, so typically we have um, around 500 current Indiana or students from Indiana on campus at any given time. So it's nice that there's other students from your area, but maybe not so many that, you know, you'll always be seeing someone that you know. Um, I think our location is also another really great thing about, um, about UK for you all. You know, we are a really easy drive from the majority of Indiana. So just about three, three and a half hours from Indiana, and, or excuse me, <laughs> from Indianapolis and the surrounding areas, from Evansville, same distance, and really from like the very top of the state, we're just 
between five and six hours away. So very easy. So it's nice that you're getting kind of out of your comfort zone, out of your state, but yet you're still close enough to home that you can get home whenever you might want to. Um, and we are so proud to, to be home here in Lexington. Um, Lexington, we are the second biggest city in the state of Kentucky. So it's nice because we're big enough that you know, there are things to do, there's fun restaurants, you know, good places to go shopping, but yet still small enough that you can really get to know the city easily. People are really nice down here. So there are a lot of <laughs> benefits to the city of Lexington. And here are just some of the kind of bragging points I wanna share with you. Um, but I would encourage each of you, when you come down to visit UK, please take some time to visit the city of Lexington as well. It's so important to get to know that city that you might be living in. And if you are coming to visit soon, let me know and I'll send you my favorite Lexington recommendations. But to wrap us up um, this, this evening, um, we would love for you to apply to the University of Kentucky. So for any of our seniors with us tonight, um, the application is open. You're able to apply online through using our application or we're a member of the common application. And this screen shows you the things that we're gonna ask that you submit um, to apply. So apply online and then um, submit your application fee or fee waiver and your high school transcript. We are test optional. We can have a conversation whether or not you wanna submit your test scores, but you do not have to, to apply. We have an early action deadline of December 1st that I would really encourage you to, to try to stick to if possible, because applying by December 1st allows you to be considered for scholarships, um, Lewis Honors College, and honestly, just let things hopefully be a little less stressful throughout the process because you have more time to get it all done. But seeking a scholarship here, scholarships, here's an idea of the different types of scholarships that we have to offer. Um, as an out-of-state student, you are automatically considered for that Bluegrass Spirit Scholarship. And then the others are, are have different either applications or processes that we can always talk about, but do want you to know that there's a lot of scholarships out there for you to choose from. But I am so excited to, um, to work with you and, and help you through that process. And we really appreciate you taking the time to be with us and hear these quick pitches tonight. So please come down. Campus is open for tours Monday through Friday, a lot of Saturdays as well. And we'd love to show you around campus, show you what we are so proud of. So look forward to working with you and go cats. Great, thank you very much, Lindsay. And next up is Western Kentucky University. All right, thank you so much, everyone, for being here tonight. I'm really, I'm, my name is Chris Storath. I'm an admissions counselor here on the Hill at WKU. Um, if you uh, don't know where we're located, we're located in South Central Kentucky, um, right along the I-65 corridor, about an hour north of Nashville, Tennessee, about an hour and a half south of Louisville. Um, so I'll go ahead and flip to the next one. Um, so right now we're at about 18,000 students. So when you're a student here on campus, you really do get that uh, big college feel. Um, you get all the perks, all the resources that any major university uh, would have to offer. Um, but we do try to keep our class sizes as small as possible. So uh, uh, on average right now, about 23, 24 students um, is our average class size. That number can drop even more, especially as you get into your upper division courses um, your junior senior year I remember having a, a class uh, of about 10 other students my senior year so they really can get small in size um, and we try to maintain those class sizes as small as possible um, so right now we're at about 150 or so uh, degree programs just at the undergraduate level. Uh, some of our more popular programs include our teacher education programs, nursing in our pre-professional programs like uh, pre-med, pre-physical therapy um, and whatnot. So uh, tons of different majors to choose from from across the board. Um, we also have uh, 350, actually probably closer to almost 400 now uh, registered student organizations on campus. So there's a ton of stuff to get involved in, there is going to be uh, something out there for literally everyone, whether it's a club uh, tied directly to your major or Greek life or a service-based uh, organization, there's definitely going to be something out there uh, for everyone. So get involved right away, right from your very first semester. 
Um, you can see at the bottom there as well, um, just some of our uh, resources that we do offer to students completely. Uh, these are all completely free to all of our students on campus, uh, such as peer and professional tutoring. So if you just need a little bit of extra help with a class uh, or even uh, editing or writing, uh, getting started writing a paper or whatnot, definitely take advantage of those. Um, we have our Career Services Center on campus as well, um, who specializes in doing things like uh, helping you to write your resume, edit your cover letter, even doing mock interviews with uh, professionals from various fields that they bring in uh, to really help you uh, uh, land that first internship or job right out of college. All right, so to talk a little bit about our scholarships, uh, these that you see right here, uh, these are some of our automatic awards, meaning you don't have to separately apply for these scholarships, um, but these are going to be based upon, uh, mostly based upon your unweighted high school GPA. Um, so you'll see right there, if you're coming to us with at least a 3.0 or above unweighted high school GPA, you're going to be guaranteed at least that $2,500 uh, academic scholarship, and that number can rise even more, uh, so just kind of depending on where your GPA GPA falls. Um, and the only one of these that does take into uh, account an ACT or an SAT is that top $8,000 merit award, just because it is one of our more competitive awards. Any scholarships you get uh, or receive from WKU or from your high school can stack with one another as well. So you don't have to pick and choose between one scholarship or another. Um, and most of these scholarships that we do offer through WKU, like these academic merit awards, are renewable for up to four years. Um, the top dollar scholarships that you see right here, this is our general scholarship application uh, for any student that's applying with us, regardless of GPA, regardless of test scores. Um, whenever you're admitted to WKU, uh, it's like a one page application you can fill out and you will be in the pool for one of 1200 different scholarships. So this, this could just mean extra money from places that you didn't even know existed. Again, some are, some are pretty specific on this top dollar source, but some are very general. So again, just for applying, you could, that could just mean several more scholarships uh, than you were anticipating. Um, and one I do want to mention that's not on my PowerPoint is for any student coming to us from Indiana, um, you are eligible for in-state tuition via our border state scholarship program. So nothing you would have to do separately for that, just for being admitted from Indiana, um, you are eligible for the in-state tuition here at WKU via our border state program. Um, and finally, I want to uh, just kind of end off with what does it take to apply to WKU? So um, we try to keep everything in one simple place on our website, just at wku.edu. Um, so when you go to our website, you click that apply button, um, you, you'll access our undergraduate application. It takes about 15 to 20 minutes to fill out on average, so nothing too extensive. Um, but the main things we're going to need when you submit your uh, admission application is your high school transcript and either an ACT or an SAT score. Um, so we typically look for students with about a 2.5 or above GPA. Um, so if you're at or above that mark, um, you are pretty much good to go for admission. We don't require any essays or writing samples uh, or anything like that. Um, it is a $50 application fee, um, but we do accept about 15 different fee waivers um, on our application. So if you, uh, on the very first page, if you participate in any of those programs, check that off, we'll waive that application fee for you. So there's my information right there. Again, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Uh, my name is Chris, um, and, and please feel free to reach out at any time with any questions that you have. Excellent, thank you, Chris. Uh, next up is the University of Tennessee. Hello. Hi, I'm Courtney and I am the Midwest Regional Rep for the University of Tennessee and I'm very excited for you joining us here tonight. So I live in the um, Midwest region. I represent the Midwest and I live in Illinois. And University of Tennessee is just about a five hour drive from Indianapolis. So we're within a pretty reasonable radius. And for some reason, my slide is not advancing. There we go. Okay. So we are located in Knoxville, Tennessee, and Knoxville has been coined a nature-loving, adventure-seeking, artsy kind of town. We are less than an hour from the Great Smoky Mountains, the most visited national park in the United States, 
And our campus is right along the Tennessee River. So it's just a really great location. If you're outdoorsy, we've got you covered. Um, I always say, if you're not, you will become that. Um, but tons of greenways, hiking trails. We have a vibrant uh, historic downtown, um, cool art scene and food scene. So there's always something to do when you're not um, on campus. There's always something for you to do uh, on the weekends or after, after class. We are Tennessee's flagship institution. We were founded in 1794 and we are the Tennessee Volunteers. So that's something we take a lot of pride in and, and the volunteer tradition is, is very important to us and our applicants. And you will continue that tradition throughout your, your college experience. We are a Research One Carnegie classification. We uh, host the most Goldwater Scholars in the SEC, top producing Fulbright. We have our UT Space Institute and we co-manage the Oak Ridge National Laboratory. So these are just some highlights to show you that there's lots of opportunities if you're looking at research or looking to um, kind of extend your life after undergraduate, um, you're really gonna build your resume at the University of Tennessee. We are Division I, part of the SEC, as I had already mentioned, and we have over 24,000 undergraduate students, and our stats for this year will be coming out um, soon, and we are continuing to grow. So there's definitely um, a place for you here. We have actually about 40% of our students are out of state, so you will, um, similar to the University of Kentucky, you will find people from Indiana here, but not overwhelming um, to where you're still kind of getting out and adventuring a little bit. We have over 360 majors, so there's plenty of options for you to choose from. And next, we're going to talk about some undergraduate programs that we have. So we host our College of Agriculture, which has a lot of programs. Pre-vet's very popular. We do have our garden. Um, so there's a lot of different options within our College of Agriculture. We have our College of Architecture and Design. That is a competitive program, so um, you do need to apply um, to make sure you're meeting deadlines for that. Also, our Tickle College of Engineering, College of Nursing are competitive programs as well. College of Arts and Sciences, our largest college, that's where most of our majors are going to fall into. We have our Haslam College of Business, nationally recognized College of Communication and Information, College of Education, Health and Human Sciences, and as mentioned, our Engineering and Nursing School, and then we do have our College of Social Work. So again, you'll find uh, one of our 360 options within those colleges once you become a student at UT. So the application process, we are uh, open for applicants right now, and we do have specific deadlines. Early action is November 1st. Strongly encourage you to apply by November 1st. That allows you to be um, in the pool for competitive scholarships and honors and scholars programs. So November 1st is our early action deadline. Regular decision deadline is December 15th. When you're looking at the application process, you will apply via our website or the Common App. We do require our students to self-report their academic record. The self-reported academic record um, is not on the Common App. It's something that comes after your application. So you will apply, and then we will send you an email to do the self-reported academic record. So that's a tip if you're um, filling out an application for us. You'll upload just an unofficial copy of your transcript. Test scores are optional, so you have the choice to include those or not. And then we do have a $50 application fee. Additional factors that we look at in our holistic review process is going to be the rigor of your high school curriculum and your senior coursework. Are you looking at taking courses um, that are prepping you for college? We do have a required essay, and then you'll notice an additional supporting statement is optional. And then for our students that apply without a test score, we do ask that you submit uh, an additional essay as well. We're looking at your extracurricular and leadership activities, things you have been involved in, and that volunteer experience um, that shows us you'll continue that volunteer tradition that we uh, take a lot of pride in. So I already kind of highlighted the deadlines, but I always like to really mention that because that November 1st kind of creeps up on us. So that's our early action deadline. Again, December 15th is regular admission deadline. So by applying by December 15th, you will still be eligible for our um, admission scholarships, which are going to be automatic scholarships based on either test score and GPA, or if you apply test optional, they will be based on um, your application as a test optional student. So there is a bracket for both um, options if you apply with a test score or not, and you do need to meet that December 15th deadline. File your FAFSA. We are actually doing a FAFSA early uh, file date of December 1st. If you file your FAFSA by December 1st, you will get an estimated award package with that December release date. So, so many deadlines. Make sure you're taking the notes for the schools you're looking at. The student, the Tennessee student experience, uh, so much to get involved in. 
We have tons of uh, extracurricular activities, lots of first year programs that students can get involved in success academies, things to really um, learn what it means to be a volunteer. We have over 400 clubs and organizations, intramural sports clubs, sorority life, study abroad programs, and our Vol Success team, which helps you transition to college. So plenty of ways to get involved. Campus is open for visitors, so please come and visit. There's my contact information, and I will share that in October, October 21st, mark your calendar, we will be hosting a Top Golf event in Indianapolis. So um, definitely check our website for more information on that. Thank you very much, and go Vols. Great, thank you, Courtney. Uh, next up is Johnson and Wales University. Good evening. My name is Victoria Jeffries, and I am very pleased to join you today. I'm trying to get my screen larger so I can share what I need with you. I am the regional admissions representative. I live here in Indiana, but I do recruit for our campuses, which are located in Providence, Rhode Island, as well as Charlotte, North Carolina. The big things to know about Johnson & Wales is that we do offer two different campus experiences for our students. Once a student is accepted, they can attend either location depending on their program. When I say different experiences, our Providence campus is home to about 7,000 students, where our Charlotte campus has a uh, little more than 1,500 students. So you get a mid-size as well as a small campus experience and community. With this being located in Providence, we are in what is a college town. It's home to over 30,000 college students among the five to eight, five to seven universities that call Providence Rhode Island home versus the Charlotte area, which has the highest number of per capita millennials in their population for the region. So it's a young, vibrant Southern city that has gone through a lot of really great things as a business center, as well as a sports center with the athletic teams that are there. We do ask that our students stay on campus the first two years that are with us. Our dorms do range from double occupancy with a hall bath all the way up to four bedroom apartments. We are proud to have over 150 clubs and organizations between our two campuses, as well as being a division three athletic school. With what we offer within our 60 plus majors and minors, we started as a business school. We are renowned for our culinary arts, hospitality, and our tourism majors and programs that we offer. Things that make us who we are is that we start our students in their major from day one. We wanna make sure they learn by doing. So we're a very hands-on curriculum. We do have learning labs that are led by our professors, but because we don't have graduate students that are incorporated into our campus, or our student experience at all. While students are with us, we do give them meaningful learning lab experiences for each of their majors. We were founded to make sure that graduates knew how to do the thing that they were studying with us. So we start by doing those learning labs, regardless if it's fashion, retail and merchandising, business, culinary arts, biology, even our physician assistance programs. The second thing we do is we require all of our students to have at least one internship while they are with us. So our experiential education department is very proud of having over 1,500 in unique locations for our students to participate in meaningful internships to help guide them into their new profession. We are open for on-campus uh, visitation for students. We do realize things are changing. So we do have an explore from home platform that will allow students to access our virtual interactions with students, with faculty, and even special interest groups, depending on majors. And all of those can be accessed through our visit portion of our jwu.edu page. We are a school that prides ourselves on being able to award over 94% of our students some form of institutional aid. We're able to do that because the first thing that we do when we review our applications is that we review our students for merit scholarships as well by looking at the rigor of their high school record, looking at their clubs and organizations that they are participating in, that they may have competed in, that they may have held an office within. Then we add on outside scholarships and definitely federal aid through the FAFSA. As a school that's always been test optional, if you don't send a test score, it does not count against you. We still review students without ACT or SAT scores for merit scholarships. Early action would be November the 1st. It is non-binding. We do get those decisions and merit scholarship awards 
to those early action students by the middle of November. We'll read in batches up until our March 1st regular decision deadline. After March the 1st, we will review applications on a rolling basis. We do a holistic review like many other schools. We do not use a rubric. We wanna see who you are and what you've done and what you have to contribute to our campus as well as how well we will be able to fit with you. We pride ourselves on our two beautiful campuses that are very walkable. We allow freshmen to bring their cars to campus, but they're really, you don't have to because of where we're located and with our transportation that's available. I'm here in Indiana. I'm very proud to be a part of the education community. This is my contact information. Please do reach out. I do hope that I'll be able to see you at one of the regional college fairs that are planned to be hosted in person in addition to the StriveScan Fair. I appreciate your time and I hope I hear from you soon. Thank you very much. Excellent. Thanks so much, Victoria. Uh, next up is Arcadia University. All right. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Nick Melheim, and I am a senior admissions counselor here at Arcadia University. Um, and I have the pleasure of working with all of our applicants that come from the great state of Indiana. So um, Arcadia University, we are a small liberal arts institution located in the greater Philadelphia region. Um, here in Arcadia, we are located in Glenside, PA. So we're about 30 minutes outside of Center City, Philadelphia. Um, that being said, you have a really nice balance between, um, you know, kind of having the suburban space with lots of green spaces. As you can see, the main feature here at Arcadia University is Gray Towers Castle. Um, yes, we do have a castle on campus. Um, Hogwarts was actually modeled after Gray Towers Castle, which is really amazing. Um, and it is a space that students can use uh, during their time here at Arcadia. So um, as I mentioned, lots of green space here on campus, but you still have the city of Philadelphia at your disposal, really accessible via public transportation through um, the Glenside train station. And there's also a, a regional rail uh, transit that comes right to the front of the campus um, with a bus stop as well. Um, we're about 2,000 undergraduate students here at Arcadia, about 1,400 grad students. So your average class size is only about 14 um, while you're here at Arcadia. Our classes are actually capped at 35 students. Um, so you're never going to have more than 35 students in a class with you. But it's much more um, around that class of uh, 14 um, during your time here uh, at Arcadia, all the way from a freshman uh, until you're a senior. We also feature more than 65 fields of study. Um, our most popular major on campus is biology, uh, mostly because of all the pre-professional programs that um, are that we feature here on campus. Um, and we have a number of award-winning graduate programs as well. Um, as a as a slide features, we do have a doctorate of physical therapy program that is ranked number 24 in the country. Outside of the classroom, there's a number of ways to get involved. We are Division Three athletics here at Arcadia University. We have 26 varsity sports to choose from. Um, and we have actually a, a number of uh, new sports that are um, added to that, to that arsenal that came up pretty uh, recently. Um, the one that's gonna be starting uh, this year for the first time is men's women's ice hockey, which is really exciting. Uh, we're one of the only Division Three institutions that um, in our area that offers uh, ice hockey, uh, especially at the men's and women's levels. Um, that being said, if you're not interested in playing a varsity sport, there's lots of ways to get involved in intramurals, much more um, casual campus rec. Um, over 60 clubs and organizations, um, ranging from different social clubs and organizations, um, ones that focus on specific majors, honor societies, volunteer organizations, so many different ways to get involved on campus. Um, and there's a career in uh, our club and resource fair uh, each semester where you'll be able to see um, what clubs do and, and talk a little bit about um, how to get involved with them. You are guaranteed housing all four years that you're here in Arcadia as well. Um, we offer traditional style residence halls, suite style living, and apartment style housing as well. Now, it wouldn't be Arcadia University if we didn't talk a little bit about studying abroad. Studying abroad has been something that has been in our DNA ever since we were founded uh, as Beaver College back in the 19th century. Um, we are really proud to say that we're nationally ranked in study abroad participation. Uh, we're ranked number one in study abroad participation um, for the better part of 10 years. Um, even more proud to say that our class of 2020 earned credit in 39 countries overall, um, and about three quarters of our students will use their passport in some way before they graduate. Um, so as you can see kind of from those stats, I mean, 39 countries overall is almost a quarter of the world that our students are going to, to explore. Um, and if even if a country uh, that's on that list isn't 
even if there's a place that you want to go that's not on that list, um, we are really able to help you um, find the location that you would want to go um, and help you get there and earn credit while you're there. Um, we have a number of unique study abroad uh, programs as well. You actually do have a number of opportunities to study abroad as a first year student at Arcadia. So if you're really itching to go abroad, um, there is an opportunity to do so um, as a first year student, even for a full semester through our first year study abroad experience um, program that we have. Um, and we also have a shorter term program um, called Preview that is a week long experience during your spring break that you can do as well. While we could talk uh, for a long time about studying abroad, I also want to talk a little bit about some other special admit programs that we have at Arcadia. Um, some of the, most of these programs are actually programs that you're considered for automatically when you um, apply to Arcadia University, like our honors program, the Phi Psi program, our first year study abroad experience that I mentioned in the previous slide, the Psi Psi program, and the Gateway to Success program are programs that you're automatically considered for. Um, all of these programs um, kind of range from being uh, focusing on studying abroad. Uh, we have uh, special admit programs that focus on um, social justice and social impact, um, in addition to helping you prepare to enter the workforce. Um, and we have a page on our website that focuses on special admit programs that I encourage everyone to, to take a look at. A little bit about the application process here at Arcadia, we are rolling admissions. Um, so our application is open um, and we are going to be start, starting to review applications very, very soon. And we're going to review all the way up through through April um, for, for our application. Uh, we are members of the Common App and we also are members of the Coalition application. There's no fee for our application, so um, no preference on which one you complete in that regard. Um, we will also need your high school transcripts. You can upload an unofficial uh, transcript. Um, through our application portal so that we can kind of get you um, move along in the process. Um, and then we do also need one letter of recommendation from either a teacher or a counselor as well. We are test optional here at Arcadia. If anyone has any questions about how that works, I'm happy to answer any questions about that. Um, and uh, all those other materials are also uh, optional that you see on your screen. And that's all I have for you guys. Thank you so much. Great, thank you. And finally, we will hear from the University of Arizona. Great, thank you so much. Let me go ahead and get all set up. All right, thank you again for joining us to learn more all about these great schools. I am with the University of Arizona. My name is Emily Martinez and I serve as the regional recruiter for the Midwest. So I happily serve all of you in the great state of Indiana. So I'm just going to jump right in. The University of Arizona was founded in 1885. Actually, when Arizona was still a territory, wasn't even a state yet. Um, so we have a long legacy, we have a long history. Our beautiful one square mile campus is located in Tucson, Arizona. That is our main campus. Arizona has about 35,000 undergraduate students and about another 10,000 making up graduate students making up our student community. Over 40% of our students come from out of state, so you wouldn't be alone. Uh, in fact, we have students coming from every single state in the, the US. We also have a very diverse student body with over 48% of our students identifying as diverse. Don't feel intimidated or overwhelmed by, the large, by this larger university. We're still able to offer a very personal educational experience. Our class size is average between 20 and 29 students and our student to faculty ratio is 15 to one, which is very impressive for a large university. So why do so many students from all over the country and really all over the world choose to study at Arizona? Um, it's because we offer big time opportunities for all students and all majors. We are a top tier world-class institution ranked in the top 1% of universities in the entire world. Arizona is a premier tier one research one institution which sounds like a mouthful, um, but that means that we are a member of the prestigious Association of American Universities, which is, is an exclusive club of about 65 colleges and universities from Harvard to Yale to UC Berkeley to the University of Arizona. Um, and that's because we've been given that title because we focus on providing research opportunities to students. Of course, we have countless other opportunities for involvement in internships, study abroad, service learning, and much more. 
There are also a lot of other advantages to being at a large public university like our programs. We offer 300 different program options. So we literally have just about any program to meet your educational needs. Um, some of our more popular programs include our nationally top 20 ranked public business college, our nationally recognized engineering programs, as well as our pre-health and medical science programs. Um, of course, we have many more to choose from, but some of those are the most popular. At Arizona, we aim to serve and support all learners. Our nationally recognized Strategic Alternative Learning Technique Center, also known as SALT Center, um, is a unique and exclusive offering available to students who need a little extra support or some additional services while studying at Arizona. So if that's something that speaks your, sparks your interest, definitely look into it because it is an exclusive opportunity available through the University of Arizona. Not only do we have countless academic opportunities, we have over 600 different student-led uh, clubs and organizations to participate in. Um, student clubs range from academics to leadership, to student government, to special interests, to Greek life, to athletics and recreation, and everything in between. My favorite student club to point out is Zona Zoo. It is the official student section for our Division I Arizona Athletics, and it has been consistently ranked uh, by ESPN as the biggest, loudest, and best student section in the Pac-12 Conference. Another great way to get involved is to live on campus. Living on campus at Arizona is really cool because you actually get to choose where you live. There is no um, restrictions or requirements. You get to choose if you want to live on campus, and if you do, where. All 23 of our dorms house freshmen through seniors. Tucson is very much a college town. It offers a great art scene, electric shops, coffee spots, restaurants, concerts, festivals, and so much more. Um, you can also um, find a lot of outdoor recreation. Um, my favorite thing to highlight uh, about Tucson, especially being from his mid the Midwest, is the gorgeous Tucson weather. It's an average school time temperature of 83 degrees and over 300 days of sunshine. What's not to like? We also like to boast that we have been, um, Tucson has been named to have the best 23 miles of Mexican food in the nation. So come hungry to Tucson. So that's all the fun stuff. To get down to the nitty gritty details, our application is open. Um, applying is easy. We do not require essays. Personal statements are optional. Recommendation of letters are not considered. Don't submit. We are also test optional. So when we evaluate students, we're looking for some very specific information. We're looking to make sure that you have completed these 16 classes. They're also known as ABOR core competencies. Um, so we will take the grades earned from these classes to calculate your unweighted six semester core GPA. And that core GPA and only that core GPA is used for admissibility and merit scholarship consideration. This is a bit confusing and very specific to the state of Arizona. So if you have questions, you can always follow up with me. Um, this chart is also available on our website if you'd like to refer to the class list later. But thinking about that, um, we also do offer merit scholarships. Our merit scholarships um, are based on, again, your core GPA. There is no separate application for our merit awards. It is an automatic review when you're automatically reviewed for admission to the university. You can see for our out-of-state students, they do range um, to a high amount. If you would like to continue to connect with us, I invite you to check out our website here. Um, we have virtual visit options. I'm also happy to announce that we have in-person campus tours. So um, please feel free to reach out to us if you would like to get your visit scheduled. Um, so I'm gonna drop my information in the chat and that's it for me. Thanks so much. Great, thank you, Emily. Um, so that wraps up our presentations. We now have a few minutes for before we end the session. So I'd like to invite all of our presenters to join me back on camera. And I would uh, ask them to respond to this question. What advice would you give someone going through the college search process? And if you all respond in the same order that you presented. So we'll start with Lindsay. There's so much advice. Um, I think what I would share with you all is um, find a way to stay organized from the beginning. So as just like today from our time together, you heard so many different deadlines, you know, November, December, all, all scholarships, one thing. So, um, you know, find a way, whether it's like a an Excel file where you list institutions that you're interested in and, and all the details like across the side, or, you know, if you want to be kind of like old school like me and get a notebook and, you know, write things down, whatever the, the way works best for you, definitely encourage you to stay organized early 
actually, um, cause it's gonna help you a lot in the long run. Yes, definitely. So I would say uh, when you're going through the college admissions process um, to take a campus tour of anywhere that you're interested in. Um, there's one thing about like hearing it right now through a screen. There's another thing of actually being on campus and getting to experience it for yourself. Uh, so no matter where you're interested in applying, definitely get on campus, take the official campus tour. Um, there's nothing like getting that student perspective. Usually it's a student led tour um, and you get to see different buildings on campus and you get to speak with different departments, the admissions department. So take the official campus tour if you can. I second both of those and to add something different, I would say check your email. Um, that's definitely how we're communicating with you. And we're just gonna keep emailing you if you didn't get the first email. So just stay on top of things by checking your email and, and staying organized. So I would say in addition to visiting campus, connect with your schools that you're thinking of attending and applying to in whichever way works best for you. If that's tapping into student forums, if that's responding to their social media posts, find as many ways as you can to connect with those schools because you need the most full picture possible to know if that is going to be the place where you're gonna be able to thrive. And that's an important part of your college search and application process. Yeah, my, my two pieces of advice actually kind of bounce off of Victoria and Courtney a little bit and that like definitely like ask questions like use us admissions counselors. It's a silly thing to kind of say, but that's why we're here. Um, you don't know what you don't know. So like it's important to ask the question just I guarantee it's something that we haven't not heard before um, sort of thing. Um, and also back to kind of emails if you want if you're like me and you hate email clutter make a college specific email. Like if I could go back and do something, I would make like Nick's college email at gmail.com and keep everything all in one place. All good pieces of pieces of advice. And the only thing that I could add um, is just to compare options, compare, compare big to small to medium, um, to close to home to far away. You never know what's gonna work best for you until you, until you go out and find it. Excellent, thank you all. So we have time for one more question with some quick responses. Um, what is one thing that you would like students to remember about your institution? I mean, I don't like the pressure of having to be first. Um, I want you to remember about University of Kentucky opportunities. Um, so many ways to, to get connected and be involved, so opportunities. Uh, for here at uh, Western Kentucky University, if there's one thing I'd like you to remember about our campus um, is, I guess, kind of playing off that as well, is uh, the amount of connections that you'll make, not only with your uh, peers that you have class with, but with uh, professional staff members, your professors, your uh, different departments around campus. Um, remember those connections that you're going to be able to make um, no matter where you are on campus, no matter what you're majoring. For Tennessee, I'd say we're the Tennessee Volunteers. You, we always say you're, you're a vol for life. So um, I definitely think for us, uh, we really believe in putting service above self and we're trying to teach our students to, to go out and engage globally um, to, to better the world we all live in. So that's what I'll tell you to remember about UT. If our school had a personality, it would be a gritty go-getter. We were started by two women in 1914 before they could even vote because they wanted to produce people that knew how to do something. And that's carried through in the 100 plus years that we have been a university. We're very focused on getting our students' hands dirty and involved in that thing that they think they want to do in the future. Um, if I could have you think of one thing with Arcadia, it would definitely be um, studying abroad opportunities and also the castle on campus. It's hard, hard to forget. And at Arizona, we have a saying, um, wonder makes us, and we really strive to um, try new things, explore new things, take chances. So using that wonder and building off it to um, make a bit bigger impact, a better impact on um, not just us here, um, but also across the world. So definitely push, pushing the boundaries and emphasizing that wonder. Awesome, thank you all so much. Um, so we are just about out of time. Um, 
for this session. And so I wanna say thank you for joining us. Uh, to our presenters, thank you for all the information that you've shared. To our attendees, you know, there will be a link to a quick survey. We do appreciate your feedback. We encourage you to uh, sign up for additional sessions that are part of this fair. So please do look at the website um, and you'll be able to find a recording of this session as well as others um, at strivescan.com slash Indiana. Thank you all so much and have a great rest of your day.